Hey everyone and welcome to another fragrance review. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome back and this time we'll be talking about a fragrance from the house of Zerjoff. This fragrance is part of the Shooting Stars collection and the fragrance is called Oroville. So here is the bottle. It's actually a very beautiful bottle. It was released in 2009. I believe around Christmas time, around the holidays, and uh, even though the perfumers for this fragrance have not been disclosed, they have not been made available to the general public, I'm just going to take a guess and say that it's the same three individuals who have worked on most of the other, if not all of the other, shooting star fragrances. And they are the creative director, Sergio Momo, Sonia Espelta, and Laura Santander. They have worked together in composing many of the other Zerjoff fragrances. So like I mentioned, this is part of the Shooting Stars collection. Zerjoff actually has a few different types uh, uh, of uh, lines within the brand itself. They have the Shooting Star collection, which is indicative of the clear bottle and the traditional gold cap. They have the Oud Stars collection, which is a darker brown bottle, uh, just like the ones that you see behind me. Those are a little bit more expensive. They're in the $300 range, even though some of them, I think either Najaf or Zafar, they actually go for a much prettier price, a much higher price. And then they have the Casamirati line, which is a little bit older. They join the Club line, which is a little bit more recent, ranging in the $230 range. And then they also have the XJ1717 collection. I believe Richwood is a part of that collection, and it actually uh, sells for somewhere between $600 and $700. So of course, Zerjoff fragrances are on the pricier side, but I do think uh, what you're getting for this fragrance, the application, the performance, price per ml, it actually does ju justify the price. And when you smell the fragrance and how unique and natural it smells, I think that that also justifies the price quite a, a quite a great deal as well. So with this fragrance, um, I originally smelled it a couple of years ago. I was very graciously given a sample by a good friend of mine, Ahmed. It was a Lucky Scent sample and I remember vividly reading uh, the label and it read Tobacco Oroville by Zerjoff. And when I received this bottle, I see that it just says Oroville on it. It doesn't say tobacco, even though this is a tobacco-based fragrance, and I think that adds to the sophistication of it. And I remember smelling it a while back and thinking to myself, I pick up on some animalic nuances, but I'm not really getting too much of a tobacco note. That could be the reason for the name change. I think that that's all it is. I haven't really heard of a reformulation or anything happening. Um, I've never heard of a reformulation with the Zerjoff fragrance before. So I'm given to understand that it has just been uh, a rebranding or a changing of the name. So if you do have a bottle or a sample of this fragrance, but it has tobacco in front of the name, I think it's the same exact fragrance. They just decided to change the name. So I'm gonna let you know what I think about this tobacco-based fragrance. But next up, let's take a look at the presentation for Aura by Zerjoff. Oroville by Zerjoff is available in two sizes, 50 milliliters and 100 milliliters. The bottle that you see here in front of me is the 50 milliliter size and this fragrance is only available in Eau de Parfum concentration. So first up, before we take a look at the box, I do want to mention that this fragrance was also once available, and I think it may still be available in a wooden box with a really nice felt lining on the inside. Uh, beautiful presentation, almost like a coffin style uh, type of a display. And uh, believe it or not, they used to come with real asteroids in them, or meteorites, excuse me, uh, meteorites in it. A really good presentation. I don't know if they still do that, but this is one of the fra the uh, shooting star fragrances do have that uh, presentation available to it. This is the other type of presentation, which is the uh, standard cardboard uh, box. Over here on the front of the sticker, you have the name of the fragrance, Oroville, the size, the concentration. Over here on the uh, side, you have three other shooting star fragrances, Dofar, Modoc, and Udin. On the very back, you have that shooting star crest and an oval display with the serial number uh, down here at the bottom. And then three more on this side, Oroville, the one I'm reviewing, Neo, and Kobe. That's pretty much it. You open it up and it gives you this really nice, beautiful felt pouch on the inside with this uh, drawstring at the top. It actually had sort of like a figure eight pattern when I first bought it. I tried to recreate it. Beautiful display. It even has a, a base inside. You can hear it. Um, just great attention to detail. Very luxurious. Very well done by Zerjoff. As far as the bottle goes, here it is. Um, beautiful presentation. You do have the clear glass, which is uh, indicative of the Shooting Star fragrances. You have the Shooting Star's logo here in the front on this metal plate that actually protrudes from the bottle. Uh, you have the name of the fragrance engraved in here at the bottom. You have a sticker at the bottom with some pertinent information, serial number and all that stuff. And here at the very uh, back, 
If it's a tester, it will just say tester, but mine actually says XJ Shooting Stars Oroville and it gives you the serial number. Uh, really nice attention to detail, Zerzhov engraved in the cap. When you look inside the cap, it even has a Zerzhov logo engraved inside the cap, the same one that's on the back of the bottle here, as you can see. Um, other than me, I don't know who else would look in there, but that's crazy attention to detail. Beautiful, heavy gold cap. It has a lot of weight to it. The distribution on this fragrance is excellent as well. It sprays out a lot of juice relative to the concentration, and this is a 10 out of 10 presentation. Really well done by Zerjoff, and that has pretty much been it for the presentation for Oroville Shooting Stars Zerjoff. Now, Oroville by Zerjoff is a tobacco-based fragrance, but I don't think that tobacco is the primary note in this fragrance, even though it's noticeable. And if you've smelled tobacco before, either a tobacco leaf or a cigar or any sort of tobacco, I think that this will bring an aura of familiarity to you. I think that the tobacco note in this fragrance, however, is kind of receding in the background. It's not even secondary. I think it's more of a tertiary note. I think the primary note, the one that really stands out in this fragrance, to me at least, is the note of musk. Now, of course, musk is a very animalic note, but what I like about this fragrance is that it conjures up images of cleanliness. You know, I think a lot of people think musky and then they think musty or they associate those two with each other. That's not the case with this fragrance at all. Uh, in my experiences, as I'm sure yours as well, uh, the note of musk actually has a very clean smell to it. Think of fragrances like White Musk by The Body Shop, where it smells like you just got out of the shower. That's really the kind of feeling that you get with this fragrance as well. Um, just keep in mind that the note of musk does have a very low olfactory frequency, so not everybody is going to uh, be able to perceive it in the same way. Uh, some people are actually anosmic to the smell of musk, so make sure you sample this fragrance before making any sort of judgment based off my review alone. So it's musky, it's soapy, just a tad bit powdery, but even if you don't like powdery fragrances, this is still one that you need to check out because it just, you know, just flirts with the border, never quite crosses it. I think another note in this fragrance that's also worthy of a mention that I think really contributes to the soapy quality of the fragrance is the note of African orange flower. And in this fragrance, it's used in very much the same way as it's used in the other fragrance with which this fragrance was released back in 2009, also part of the Shooting Stars collection called Osol. That fragrance also has African orange flower, as does Dajala, and I think even one or two other Zerjov Shooting Star fragrances. So if you're familiar with the way that you know these perfumers use the note of African orange flower in their compositions, you're not really going to get too much of a surprise with this fragrance. The only difference is that this fragrance does contain the note of Neroli, which adds a little bit of that citrusy cleanliness that you get in the opening. However, the volatility is quite high, so it is going to evaporate in a very short period of time, but you're still left with that soapy quality to it. The third uh, strongest note, I would guess, in this fragrance is the note of chamomile. Now, I've only encountered chamomile in the form of tea, and it is a mild sedative, and for me, it does give me sort of a calming feel, not just when I drink it, but when I smell it as well. And even though I cannot directly pick up on the note of chamomile in this fragrance, when I do smell this fragrance, it does make me feel calm and relaxed. So I'm only gonna guess intuitively that there is the note of chamomile in this fragrance. And then we have the tobacco. So this is a tobacco-based fragrance, but as you can tell, tobacco is not the dominant player or the star player of this composition. The tobacco note, and I would like to touch base on this, the tobacco note in this fragrance comes across as more of like a damp, earthy, leafy, green type of a tobacco note. It doesn't really smell, even though it is a Cuban leaf tobacco, it smells more like a tobacco that was freshly picked off a tobacco plantation. If you're thinking of fragrances like Tobacco Vanille by Tom Ford, this is a little bit different from that. Uh, Tobacco Rouge by Phaedon, this is a little bit different from that. This is, I would say, closer to the tobacco note that you would find in um, Creed's Tabaron. So if you're familiar with that fragrance, this is not all that different, just this is a soapier take on that with perhaps a little bit more citrus, a little bit uh, more resinous. So it does have the note of sandalwood in the dry down, which adds a little bit of sweetness, as does the note of vanilla, even though to me it's not very strong. And this fragrance, uh, apart from clary sage, which gives it a little bit of a culinary quality to it along with a cinnamon note that's not listed but I do get a little bit of cinnamon. In the base you also have the note of amber and uh, the amber in this fragrance is a very different uh, take on that accord 
uh, in the sense that it's not very sweet uh, at all and it doesn't really smell too resinous it actually smells a little bit spicier and I think that that is because this uh, fragrance has more of an emphasis on the note of galbanum so I think that this is clean it's just a tad bit floral it's very musky you do have this nice authentic very natural smelling tobacco leaf and uh, I think that this is a great blend of notes very harmoniously blended and very well executed composition this is actually one of my favorite shooting star fragrances right next to of course Dajala and Modoc and even Neo which I yet to own but it will be in my collection very soon especially considering that we're in the summer season right now the type of person that I could imagine wearing this fragrance is somebody uh, who's very professional, conduct himself with an aura of professionalism, very confident with himself, and it does have a very powerful, regal, and luxurious feel to it. Um, I can imagine somebody um, in a very wealthy, very authoritative position wearing this very confidently. And the best way that I can describe it is imagine somebody who's very powerful has the ability to make really strong decisions at the snap of his fingers but now imagine this person in his most calm most relaxed state that's the best way that i can describe this fragrance in terms of this fragrance giving you getting you a compliment or a complaint i have not received an unsolicited compliment from this fragrance but i can only guess and assume that it will get you compliments i did have my girlfriend smell it she absolutely loves it i had uh, family smell it they absolutely love it and I can only imagine that you know uh, you will get compliments wearing this fragrance because it smells soapy and it smells clean and a tiny bit powdery and very unique and intriguing so I think that that would warrant a compliment in itself but I do want people to know that the compliments with this fragrance are going to be secondary for sure primary in this fragrance is the way that it makes you feel when you wear it just when I, whenever I smell it, I just think of the color gold. I think of regality. I think of luxuriousness, you know? I think of royalty. And uh, when you smell this fragrance, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Please get a sample of this fragrance uh, and make a judgment for yourself. Last up, we have the rating. Thanks. First up, we have uniqueness and overall smell, and I gave Oroville by Zerjoff an 8 out of 10. I do think that this is a very unique smell and I uh, really have no source of comparison for it. It doesn't compare to any other fragrance that I've tried before. Uh, the reason why I did not give it a perfect score is because it is a little bit too spicy and uh, if you are not so sensitive to the smell of musk, it might not have that same balance to your nose that it does to my nose. So I think that this fragrance is a little bit more on the subjective side. So I highly recommend you sample before you buy. Fixatives were used incredibly successfully, uh, hence the reason why it lasts as long as it does. And that brings us to our next category, which is longevity. Longevity is a 10 out of 10. This will last 12 plus hours on your skin. It lasts for a very long time, and I do think that it resists the elements quite well. And uh, I've worn it in a couple different seasons now, and it has performed very well for me. Next up, we have projection, and this fragrance is also a 10 out of 10. This will project off your skin for five to six hours. It's only at about the seven or eight hour mark when it starts to sit closer to the skin, somewhat becoming a skin scent, almost like a faux skin scent. It never really sticks or adheres to your skin quite as closely. When you walk into the room, you're going to have this scent bubble around you, this aura around you, and it will fill up the room. You will get noticed. Excellent projection. Next up, we have versatility. I give this a seven out of 10. Now, this fragrance is marketed for men. I do think it's a unisex fragrance, but I think that a, a man would pull it off a little bit more confidently or a, it would work for a man a little bit better. Um, I do think that this is more of a spring and summer fragrance because of its soapy qualities, but the performance is so good, you can really wear it all year round. Probably not in the dead of winter though. And I think for uh, occasions, I think that this would work better you know, on a night out or semi-formally or formally. I really don't see anybody wearing this casually, especially considering the price point, which I still think is a very good price, especially considering the price per ml. And of course, if you buy the larger bottle, bottle excuse me, which is a better value, uh, you will get more out of it for a cheaper price. Um, but I can only see somebody 25 and up uh, wearing this fragrance because it does have a very mature feel to it. And then last up we have presentation. I already told you what I think about that. I think uh, Zerjoffs have the best presentation in the game right next to By Killian. Uh, and I ended up giving it a 10 out of 10. And uh, overall, I'm going to give this fragrance a 9 out of 10. 
I think it's a great fragrance. I think it really stands out. It's a perfect smell, very wearable, very accessible, very versatile. It evokes really positive images, makes you feel great about yourself, you know, and uh, it will attract positive attention as it has for me, albeit not um, unsolicited, but I can foresee that it will in the future. So a 9 out of 10 is what I give this fragrance. So guys, thank you so much for watching. That was my review of Oroville by Zerzhov. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to shoot me a message and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. This has been Steven with another fragrance review from Red Essence. See you very soon.